Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Mountain Blade Warband Anno 1257. And we are here as part of a giant mass of Nicene troops around the city of, or the castle of, Larissa. If you look in the background, you will see that southern Greece has been reconquered for the empire. So that's good. I participated in the siege of Patras, and let me just tell you that it was a horrible experience that I hope to never, ever participate in again. From now on, any siege that I am in, I'm just going to tell my troops to fight without me because the way to describe it is you send 30 of your guys up the walls on this tiny little corridor to fight 30 of their guys. And so you'll win, but then they'll get 30 more reinforcements who will kill all your guys. So then you'll get 30 more reinforcements who will kill all their guys. And this goes on about 50 times. The siege took about an hour of real time, and the line of troops didn't even change until right near the end. It was absolutely god-awful. And so <laughs> I'm going to be leaving this siege here because I want no part of it, even though... My buddy here, Stratigos Mikhail Peleojos, who out of all the characters in the game probably likes me the best right now, he wants me to follow him, but it's just it's just not going to happen because it's, it's just terrible. A lot has happened since last you watched me. It's been about a month since the last episode. I have won two tournaments and a melee after trying like 20 of them. I have invested in a brewery in Chonai, which right now is the only... Nicaean city that will allow me to invest in them. Smyrna and Nicaea don't like me very much for some reason. And as far as I'm aware, the only way to get them to like you is to do guildmaster quests, which generally involve driving cattle or delivering wine, which are terrible. So I was able to find one where I drove cattle down to Damascus, and I'll, I'll be happy to do that. I'll take anything here, here, or here. I just don't want to have to go through the Latins because that will lead to my untimely death. But I need to tell you about Sardis. I've invested a lot of money in my lands. I've built all the tier 1 production buildings for my manor. However, it's worthless to me right now because Sardis has been raided twice and there was nothing I could do about it. The first one was glorious and I really wish I was recording it because it was my army versus a Latin army. Literally, the battle came down to uh, Marcus had fallen earlier and it came down to one of my archers who I was controlling versus one of the crossbowmen of the Latins. That was literally, it was man on man. And unfortunately I fell, I didn't have that much health and the guy took me. And with that, with just one crossbowman, they succeeded, captured me. All my companions were driven off, my army was destroyed and it's taken me a while to rebuild. But all the companions have come back. So we're back to where we were. We're doing okay financially. The troops cost 2200 My brewery is giving me 141 I would like to get more breweries elsewhere or new businesses. Sardis will be worth about 3000 once it gets put back together, but right now I have about a week and a half worth of money. I'm hoping to find another tournament. In terms of, actually I'll show you my, I'll show you my, oops, I don't want to do that. I'll show you my Known lords. Okay, so Mikhail Paleogis likes me four. A bunch of the Greek guys like me two, even the emperor. I don't know why this guy. This is a Latin. Not sure why he likes me. But a few of the Stratigoses, Stratigai, do not like me. And Umberto Pavolacini, the Margrave of Bodonista, doesn't like me at all. And you want to know why? I'll show you why. Because. He is my prisoner. Look at him with his stupid little pointy shoes. And I don't know what to do with him, honestly. I, it was a great battle. It was an equal battle of about... Actually, it wasn't. I thought I was going to have help. So it was about 50 of my guys versus 100 of his, or that ratio at least. And we ended up winning. And on the first step of the battle, I charged him with my lance and took him out. Knocked him out right there in the beginning. But I've taken him to a ransom broker who will not purchase him. I've went to the Emperor, who will not take him. I don't know what the hell to do with him, honestly. I can build a prison in my town, but I don't have one yet, so I don't know. He's just kind of hanging out. I'd rather get rid of him. I know he's liable to escape, or at least I escaped when I got captured, so 
I would really like to get some money for him. I have some new troops. I have some Greek heavy swordsmen. That's quite a sword. Looks very much like a spear to me. But anyway, I have a heavy archer. There's some, a medium spearman. And I have some medium lancers. And I think you've seen the medium swordsmen already. So I'm, I've given my men the best I can. Better armor. So they're all slightly better. Now everyone but Tycon has a horse. However, they're worthless in battle. They just stand there. Even if I put them with the archers and set the archers to fire, the archers fire, but my companions just stand there. They will not use their arrows, and I don't understand why. I don't want to take away their melee weapon, because just in case the enemies get close, I don't want them just to stand there and get killed. I want them to fight back. But it's, it's becoming silly. Like They're just standing there. They're wasting time. And that's a problem for two reasons. One, they don't contribute to the battle. But two, they don't gain experience. And so, like, my trainer is worthless. He's great at training somebody from level 0 to level 1, but he can't train them any higher because he's not any higher. So it's just, if anybody out there, Rick Khan or somebody, if you know how to force these guys to use their arrows, God, I would love that. And if you know what to do with my, my prisoner, Umberto Pallavicini, here. So, okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we are going to leave. I know my mission is to follow the Stratigos, but... Again, I'm not going to be participating in another worthless siege, and we have plenty of troops to take this place. They have 388 troops, and we have, like, at least twice that. So I'm actually going to go back to my lands. There won't be any history in this episode. Just want to get that out of here. This is more of a show you what I've been doing in the past month kind of episode. Oh, have I showed you me? So I have a cool hat now. I have this, and my, my body armor is still the same, but I have better boots. I have gauntlets, and I do have a mace in order to take prisoners because they're pretty lucrative. I've raised up my iron flesh because I found that it helped me a lot in the tournaments and the melees and on the battlefield. I'm staying away from power draw. I guess I'll just use a crossbow. Weapon master, I'm not sure about. I can get another point in it, but as far as I understand it, it just lets you put more points into the proficiency and right now I'm at 172 and I honestly don't feel like using my sword has become any easier since this was under 100 so I don't really understand how the proficiency relates to actually using the weapon in practice which is more of a manual thing. I did get better riding and I get I got better training because right now I'm the most experienced person in the entire army so I figure I should be the one training since I'll improve my men. I have better tactics and better leadership that's pretty much it. I'm basically becoming a jack of all trades, master of none, which I don't know if that's a good thing or not. In some games, that really hinders you, where you're really supposed to focus on one aspect of the skill tree and leave the others alone. And in some games, it's better to be diverse. So I'm not really sure. But there's, there's so many things on here that I want that I've been spreading it out. I need to get rid of this guy. So I'm down to 51 troops. I had, at my height, I had about 100, but again, the siege really took it out of us. Let's see what Smyrna's up to. Okay. So let's go to the tavern. I like the taverns because there may be a belligerent drunk that I can kill. There may be a ransom broker. And I haven't had any morale problems at all recently because I spend about 1,000 gold a week on whores. But I, my men are very high morale right now. I don't think we need that. Nothing's going on here. So, Hello, Tournament Master. Hello, Marcus Aurelius. Good to see you again. Yes, it certainly is. Let's see if there's any tournaments nearby. Constantinople! That would be awesome. It'd be like Robin Hood, right? Where you show up for the tournament in your enemy's capital and you win it. But I don't think I can do that. So, none of these places are really accessible to me. Italy, 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 the Latins, Spain, Scotland, and Prague. So no, no tournaments for me. But let's, let's do a melee. That'll be fun for you guys. These are so hard for me to win, mostly because the enemies tend to gang up on you and bully you. You just have to be, you have to have real good spatial awareness. 
That's the hardest part. And you have to encourage them to fight each other and not you. Ooh, I've never fought one at dusk before. This is kind of difficult. See? Another thing you have to be smart to do is when you're a shield warrior like I am, your shield will inevitably break and you have to replace it by one on the ground. There we go. There's probably someone behind me too. Yeah, there he is. There he is. I like to zigzag to avoid the arrows, as opposed to using my shield. Oh. See? Just like that. So you have to go down and pick up. Come on. There we go. Pick up the other guy's shield. Damn it. Okay. Okay, we're doing all right. Oh, that's not going to be good. Oh, shoot. Three more to go. Yeah, I'm not going to make this one. I doubt it. Oh, come on. What? Maybe I'm slower because I have an arrow sticking out of me because I normally can easily avoid arrows. Uh-oh. See. Let's see, it's when you start getting ganged up on like this, this is when it's hard to win. Maybe if I had better athletics. Let's let them let's let them fight each other. Leave me alone. Yeah, you guys just don't mind me. I'm just here minding my own business. Shoot. Yep. Unfortunately, wasn't meant to be. But I did get, what, 75 gold? Or 25? That's not very good. See, so this is, it's fun to do these fights, and it definitely improves your skill and your experience, so it allows you to level up, but you don't make a ton of money from it, whereas the tournaments, you make a ton of money, and they're 10 times easier. Tournaments are super easy. Like, I was able to win my first tournament without any trouble at all. Okay, do I have anything to sell? I don't even think I do. Well, I do. I have a linen tunic, some Mongol hats, a rusty counterpoint sword, and a militia tunic. All right. I have a bunch of grain. Grain's cheap. Oh, I upgraded my sword to a thick Byzantine, or shield, to a thick Byzantine shield. I have my spiked mace, my lance, which is just about done for, and my falcon, which I have yet to find a sword better than that. I had a Byzantine sword, but it honestly wasn't as good. And here's my cool helmet. It's rusty, but it's plus 67 to armor. Then I have my lamellar gauntlets and my Byzantine heavy cavalry armor. It's funny in the tournaments because everybody has better armor than I do, and I'm still beating them. Like, they all have, like, that golden... They don't even have it here. But, let's see, 60... So this would be the next step up. And this is actually reasonably priced. So if I can find some cataphract armor, I could probably afford that. Now, it's the, yeah, it's when you get them to the 50,000, so it becomes very hard for me. And I think my helmet's actually the best Byzantine helmet there is. This one's 62. So yeah, 67. That's probably, yeah, I'm, I'm at a pretty good level. Not Yeah, I definitely want cataphract armor next, and which I would be able to afford eventually. Let's head back. And let's get some volunteers. Okay. I really do enjoy my horse archers. They're able to cause a lot of damage without actually 
putting themselves up to getting hurt. So I try to keep my cavalry component, even though they're expensive, and I recognize that and try to keep my money up, I try to keep a lot of cavalry because they're useful to me. 11's kind of a lot, but <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Oh, man, and they turn into Lancers later, so that might be very helpful later on. So I'm going to go check Nicaea and see if... I did something for them recently. Let's see if that... I've been doing a lot of jobs for villages, too, so a lot of villages really like me. I want to go back to my lands, but right now they're looted, so it's kind of worthless. Okay, so he gave... Yeah, this is who... I asked my patron guy, Mikhail Peleogis, who he was going to give Patras to, and they gave it to Erinikos. That's what they were planning on. I asked if he'd give it to me. He said no. He didn't want to hurt his relationship with his brother. That made sense to me. I mean, the only thing I've done is won a few tournaments. Oh, really? Latin Empire? Caravan? Really? But they have a lot. They have 65. And they're all mercenaries. So they're probably pretty good troops. Should I risk it? I don't think I am going to. If I had 100 troops, I totally would. But they have probably have higher quality troops than I do. That would be great. Oh, that would be so great. Whoa. Oh dear. This might not be good. They have 88 troops. I thought I'd make it to the city. What should I do? I might lose everything here. Hmm. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait till the next episode, because I know it's short, but this might take 20 minutes, this battle, just by itself. So, next episode will be the battle. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.